What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our second playthrough of The Long Dark. I've been excited about doing this series again over the course of the last couple weeks. I have been brushing up and playing on my own and I've just been having a blast with the entire situation. That is to say I've been hunting deer with rocket launchers and all kinds of other good stuff like C4. No, I'm just joking. If you don't know what The Long Dark is or if you're new to the channel since the last time that I played this because I think I only had like 50,000 subscribers when I played this last. I know, only 50,000. Nonetheless, I think we've quadrupled in size since then. If you don't know what The Long Dark is, it's a pure survival game that's all that it is and so a lot of survival games use things like zombies or supernatural hokum is sort of like a crutch to get you through all the boring parts of the game this is purely survival mono atero would be the way that i would describe it and so i think we're gonna have a good time here as a note i haven't decided yet how i'm going to put this up on youtube i don't get very good performance out of the game so it may not be in 60 frames per second it's a limitation of unity which is what the game is created in and so unfortunately I have, an, uh, I have a pretty strong rig right now, but I can't get like amazing performance out of the game anywhere but inside, so we'll see how that goes. But the 60 frames per second issue aside, I am looking forward to playing the game with all of you. Let's get started. I think I'm probably... There we go. Oh, no, we don't have story mode just yet. Sandbox mode. There are three difficulties now. Pilgrim mode is basically Care Bear mode. Nothing's going to kill you except for the environment outside. Wildlife will not attack you. You can pet the foxes. You can be friends with the wolves. No, I'm just joking. You can't be friends with the wolves. They're always kind of vicious and dickish, but they won't attack you outright. Voyager mode is the best tuned in my opinion. It's the game mode that's supposed to be played right now. It's got like the perfect balance of both environmental hazards and also physical like animal hazards. And then if you go up to Stalker, Stalker hasn't been balanced yet and you can pretty much tell when you play it. Essentially it's not actually that much different from Voyager. The way that I would say that it's different though is they just took wolves and multiplied them by five. And you know how in H1Z1 right now there's way too many zombies? This would be way too many wolf mode, which actually is slightly better because it's alliterative. But I prefer Voyager mode. I can survive in Stalker mode, so if people really, really, really want to play like wolf mode equal equal true we can later on but for right now I think that Voyager is pretty much the exact same gameplay like you don't get hungry any faster in Stalker I don't think you don't freeze any faster in Stalker everything seems the same except for the amount of wolves so anyways we're gonna go with Voyager on this playthrough and I think we're gonna have a good time with it and if not meh a pox upon that I'm gonna go with the female survivor because I've been playing the last couple days with the male survivor and I'm kind of tired of his voice that's pretty much all that there is to it right now and so off we go and we're gonna start at Mystery Lake I guess Now, if you want to read this next part, it's going to give you, like, a snippet of a book. If you wanted to read this book, you should actually just go read, I don't know if Walden is a book or a poem or what the hell it is. I don't, I don't think I've ever read it. Still, at the same time, never read it, but if you wanted to read this, go ahead and pause and, you know, we'll get started with the game here. So, here we are, inside the long dark. I don't know exactly where we are right now, and so I do have quite a bit of metagame knowledge for this one. I think we're actually on the western edge of the lake right now. And so in the early game, it looks like we're actually caught out in a blizzard. It feels like minus 18 degrees Celsius right now, which means we actually have a major temperature problem. But have hope. We're very, very near to warm areas. And so you see these little fishing shacks out here? I think that what I'm going to do, given that we started out on this side, there's a number of things that you have to babysit when you play the game. The first and most important being your cold, since that's going to be the one that fills up the most. However, we do have hunger and thirst and some other things to worry about. There's a lot of different utilities right here that we'll talk about as we get further and further on into the game. As of right now, they're not completely relevant, especially given the fact that our coldness meter is ticking up very, very rapidly. And I would sincerely prefer not to die like eight minutes into our first playthrough, especially given the fact that I play the game very, very well when I'm all by myself. You just have to take my word for it. Just believe me that when nobody's watching, I'm pretty decent at this game. We can loot. Are there any cattails around or anything? Thing. So there's a lot of different things that we can loot inside of this game for right now What we're gonna try and accomplish on the first day is to lock down food for two or three days And so typically what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna start out with preserve food in the beginning of the game Once you, you're gonna use that to piggyback you and allow you to get a gun once you have a gun You're gonna rely on hunting but for right now. Oh, there we go right there a it's granola bar Fantastic, I'm gonna grab the newsprint roll from up there. We can use that to start fires We've got plastic bins that one's empty unfortunate I think I see a 308 round on the ground which would be pretty great Great. If we can find the 308 round on the ground, we can make it sound, which will then lower our enemies to the ground. We've got some cedar firewood. So cedar firewood actually ignites very, very easily, but doesn't burn for a long time. We've got reclaimed wood over there, which is just about average in all respects. We've got a fish hook right there, okay. which you normally have to craft, so that'll help out a little bit. And so that's the fishing hole right there. There's nothing inside the pot belly stove. Apparently it's been hitting the edibles extra hard right now. The ice fishing hole, we actually need something to break a hole in the ice right there. And up until we get that, unfortunately, we won't be able to do anything with it. But yeah, I can't get better than 45 frames in this game, no matter what I do. No matter what I do, the game just does not love me. And I've read that it's a Unity 4 
sort of thing. It's not like a problem with the game from what the developers have said. They said it's a problem with the way that Unity 4 is utilizing like high-end GPUs and CPUs. More cedar firewood. I would hope for fur. So fur doesn't light easily, but fur wood actually burns for a long ass time, and so I prefer it because you get a lot more mile. Oh! A down vest. That's actually a pretty solid piece of gear for the early game. That's not the, that's not something that I would expect to find this early on. And we got a little bit of scrap metal right there for when we get our craft on. Indeed, the game does have crafting. I'm going to throw that on for right now. It's not going to do a whole lot for us because it's a little bit beat up. However, it will give us a little bit more resistance, and so take from that what you will. It looks like the temperature is actually getting better, despite the fact that our character sounds like she's, you know, chewing on pieces of her body and losing her mind right now with cold. It's not actually that bad. Cattails over here. You want to harvest these cattails. These are a new item. I don't know when they added these, but the cattails are harvestable, and they give you cattail stalks, which you can chew on. I had no idea that cattail stalks were edible, and given the fact that I like survivalism, and I am into survivalism, that seems like one of those things I should vet in between here and the next episode. Now, as part of the random generation of the game, the map is always the same, but the locations are different each time. And so what this means, this guy tried to make himself a blanket out of snow, but yeah, you can't make a blanket out of snow. Snow is cold, it doesn't hold warmth. And I would say that the Inuits would argue with that. However, we are gonna loot his dead body right now. Looks like he had some fairly traumatic wrist bleeding going on before he left. Still, this little bit of snow right here has decided to drop on in. He died with a manly beard and a weird protrusion right there on his hand. He only has three fingers. He's got kind of like an animated Ninja Turtle thing going on. Let's head out to this one right here. So part of the random generation is that these villages back here will be in different, I guess, states of burn down. That one over there on the right has burned down pretty spectacularly, so that's a little unfortunate. I've got some reclaimed wood on the side. The difference that I would tell you between this and Stalker as well is that there's a lot less loot on Stalker. Doesn't really matter because the game always seems to sort of take a beeline towards oh, you one. running out of stuff anyways. In Stalker mode, I tend to run out of stuff around day 6 or 7 and you just start hunting and foraging. Whereas in this mode, I'd say like days 10 to 14 are where I run out of stuff. And then you gotta start hunting and foraging. So there it is. Those are the other two differences between the difficulties. Not a whole lot though. I mean, honestly, you can play both of them. If you have knowledge of the game and where you're supposed to be going, you can play either difficulty. And it's not going to be that bad for you. It's just the wolves. It's just the wolves. There are so many wolves. I think if they brought the wolves down by about 25% in stalker mode, that would be the best way to tune it. Because everything else feels very, very solid in stalker mode. And I actually prefer it. It's just I don't feel like ducking wolves for hours at a time. So take from that what you will. Inside this little shack over here. That's right. We're getting loot from shack right now. Apparently our relationship. Ooh, a hunting knife. There's high tier gear. And then we've got fishing tackle, which is going to save us some crafting time as well. And so we've gotten fairly lucky right now. The acquisition of a hunting knife is really, really going to be positive for us. Because it allows us to chisel through the ice right here. It's going to allow us to actually gut animals as well. Which is really, really sort of major so that you can get their hides. And then from there, you can make better loot, which allows you to stay warm longer. So that you don't have to worry about freezing to death. Which is the principal concern that we have right now. My only principal concerns in life were relegated to high school. Because I was constantly getting kicked out and getting into trouble in high school so there it is I had lots of principal concerns in high school most of them were me having to go to the principal's office still our concerns right now are getting a gun a knife and some better clothing I don't see any lootable nodes over there so I'm gonna run on into this building right here on the plus side I do get really good frame rates when I'm inside buildings so there it is if we press the M key we can whip out a match real fast there's some cloth right there which is gonna be good because we do have stuff to repair right now we've got a backpack on this side nothing for us unfortunately another newsprint roll on that side inside these crates there's nothing you should always check the gun rack right here because it is a possible spawn point for firearms are we losing heat right now? I'm going to rest for an hour because we are losing heat right now. I'm sorry, we're losing coldness. Our heat is going up. The meter is actually counterintuitive. As you get colder, the cold meter fills up. So there it is. That allows us to bring our cold down slightly. And we'll see if the weather's a little bit better outside, too. In this game, one of the things that you should do is if it's blizzarding, you should just chill for a little while and see if you can get the weather to go away because it's see right there. Now we're only at minus 5, which gives us a whole lot more operating time to get stuff done. Now, I'm holding down the shift key the entire time. This is going to get nerfed as you carry more and more gear. I would stay away from sprinting as you carry more stuff because it can cause you to have sort of like ankle hazards. You would have, oh, I don't know. I guess you would have cantankerous ankles would be the way that I would put it. I think that, I'll call them wankles maybe. They don't work quite as well as you would want them to. 
And so let's, I think we've hit all of the shacks out there in the snow. We're going to try and hit all three of these little ski lodges out here. We are in the Canadian wasteland. It's not, is it a Canadian wasteland? Canadians, is there any part of Canada that's just wasteland like this? Is this wasteland? This seems like it would be slightly useful. It's not like what I would call Death Valley, which is definitely like wasteland. A thin wool sweater. That might be better than the one that we started with. I think we're just wearing long johns right now for our underwear so that might help out obviously if you want to get warmer change underwear out in the middle of the oh we already have one but this one's in better shape than the one that we're wearing right now so we're gonna get actually it's gonna double our heat retention so that's pretty good that'll help out slightly bring our clothing warmth bonus up a little bit sometimes there's good loot laying around on the ground over here and indeed you should always check the ground right here because it does look like refuse but it's not you can actually find amazing loot like hatchets over here and a ton of fur firewood oh my god we are starting off absolutely fantastic so in the early game find a gun find some tools secure a water supply oh my god you need water very very badly so stay on top of that i'm gonna whip out a match real quick because i have trouble seeing things inside these crates sometimes got a plastic container on this side we'll see if it's got anything for us it's got nothing we've got a backpack over on this side that i'm gonna rifle through it's got an accelerant. I don't know how useful that's going to be. In the early game, I guess accelerants are pretty useful. If you don't know what an accelerant is, just like kerosene. It's just something that you can throw onto the logs to help them light up a little bit quicker if you're having trouble getting them lit. You shouldn't. Given the amount of newspaper we have right now, getting a fire lit should actually be really, really easy. But our character struggles. You do have a skill system in this game where as you start fires, you will get better at starting fires. I, I know. The pyrotechnic aspect it seems it's got the... That the pyromaniacs in the crowd with a shine in their eye right now getting all excited like really i get rewarded for starting fires i'd be like whoa rain it in right there rain it in right there skippy what i'm saying is that as you set fires your skills will go up and you will get better at setting the fires you should also check up underneath the beds every now and again i've probably missed stuff because i wasn't thinking about it but up underneath the bed sometimes there's stuff hidden away and if you press the control key you can crouch to get on in there so I will try and treat this as a little bit of a tutorial. As far as the UI and the way that you interact with the game goes, over on this side, we've got one building left. Our cold is looking okay. We haven't quite gotten the snifflies and fallen over dying yet from purple fingers and all that fun stuff. However, I am going to try and hustle this out, and then we'll take a little bit of a hiatus in the ski lodge once we get over there. There's a grape soda on that side. we got a little bit of wood laying around on the floor. Definitely don't leave your wood laying on the floor when it's cold out. It seems like a good way for something to come by and grab it, or for some way for it to freeze off and just, you know, detach, which would lead to a really, really unpleasant vacationing experience. And so there it is. We've got the final building taken care of. We're going to go to the burnt out buildings on the left hand side. Once we get those all looted out, we'll be in a really, really good spot to get started. So as I said, you want to find food. You're going to use that to leapfrog into finding a gun. Once you've got the gun, you're going to use that to start hunting and gathering and foraging and sort of surviving off the land. But for right now, candy bars and things like that are going to be the best way to fill our collective gullets. Over this hillside, we shouldn't have too much of a walk. There is going to be a lot of walking in this game. I apologize about that. It's just part of the game. You spend like half your life just trudging around going from point A to point B and occasionally make a foray out to point D, although nobody likes point D. It's not quite as set up as point A or point B. Those two places have very, very nice couches, which to my experience tends to be the barometer by which we judge a location for vacationing. How nice is the couch? The couch is very, very nice. We may be going there. Point D, bad couches. Very, very uncomfortable couches. Another accelerant right there in the bin. We've got a plastic container right there. Since we haven't found a whole lot of matches, I'm actually going to sort of like hold off on using matches to illuminate locations. We got another down vest, and that one's an 87% down vest. And so that means what I'm going to do, since this vest is down for the adventures ahead... I'm actually going to harvest this one right here. It'll take 20 minutes, but it'll give us... Oh, we only have four hours of daylight. Okay, so we may have to do this a little bit more aggressively than I would initially prefer. What I want to do is I want to go out to the hunting lodge. There's a like sort of a trapper's lodge, I guess, out there, like a beaver hunter's lodge that almost always has a gun. In. Now, it doesn't always, and if it doesn't have a gun, don't panic because there are other locations that we can get the goodies from. However, it is a good place to start if you don't have a firearm and you haven't searched all the locations yet. It's a very, very good place to look for some fun with a gun. And so let's give it a run while we look for fun with the gun. We're no longer in the sun, so unfortunately it won't be fun with a gun in the sun. But we can get a run-in right there. I do hope that someday as you sprint around, they add sort of like a system where your body temperature goes up. Because actually I run and really, I, I don't run where it's like 15 degrees outside obviously, but I do run 
almost pretty much like I run in shorts and basically like a wife beater when it's like 43 degrees outside. And if I just use like earmuffs to keep my ears warm, I'm perfectly fine once my body temperature gets up there. About 10 minutes into the run, I'll be perfectly fine. And so you can actually, if you're keeping your heart rate up and your body warming itself, you shouldn't have too many problems dealing with cold outside. Now, one thing you will want to watch out for, especially in an environment like this, is that it will cause you to sweat as you raise your heart rate, especially if you're wearing a lot of gear. And so you'd be like, so what? Well, things getting wet, it lowers their heat retention. That's also something I would mention about cold weather survival gear is that you should never wash it. Every time that you wash cold weather survival gear, like in a washing machine anyways, like the standard way that most people wash it, it lowers the heat retention of that object. Now you can get, I know that there's like the non-water soaps, I forget what they're called. They come in little squirty bottles, and you can use those to hand wash your equipment, and that actually doesn't affect the heat retention. But all that I'm saying right now is that applying water to any sort of non I guess any impervious sort of shell or anything like that will actually lower its retentive values, especially if it gets into the down filling and things like that. It can cause all kinds of problems. So I would say better safe than sorry. Just don't get your cold weather gear wet if you can help it. It, or at least if you've got to limit the wetness, make sure that the wetness only hits the outside shell and that it never gets into the inner parts. We've got a little bit of time. Ooh, it's so risky right now. We could give it a go and see if we could make it. Let's do it. Let's live life on the edge right now. I'm feeling like I haven't been really so cutting edge lately. And so living life on the edge seems like a great way to get cut right now. So let's go. I'm going to. So the hunting lodge that we're looking for is way off that direction. If we can make it, we can spend the night there. It'll lock us off. It'll essentially allow us to cordon off an entire corner of the map. And that's important because it'll save us trips having to go out here. Seeing as, let's say that we hit all the close stuff and we find a gun. We would have to run all the way out there to find basic supplies. And it's a long trip. It's a pretty long trip. And I can see the trip right now looking rather proud of itself. Calm down, trip. It's not, we're not talking about that. We're just talking about the fact that it's going to take us a while to get out here. And so if you're trying to find this place, the way that I do it, I can reproduce this every single time, too. I'm pretty good at the reproduction as we speak. You walk down. You see that busted-ass house right there? You walk down the hill. There's going to be a busted-ass house. There's a mountain right here. Walk along the left-hand side of it. You're going to follow it on in. There's going to be a broken house over here. Life has just done its worst, and it's a broken house. It's a broken house. It simply can't cannot go any further. All of its dreams and its aspirations, and frankly, its respiration has stopped too. If your house is respirating, by the way, that's horrifying, and I will never come to visit your house because I am afraid of the ghostesses. Inside it here, we got the deadfall area. There's usually like either a hatchet and or some wood up inside of here, unless you're on stalker mode. If you're on stalker mode, eh, good luck. Loot is very, very limited in stalker mode. You're not going to find a whole lot. The game actually has a pretty difficult ramp up period. When you're walking around in the early game, I would highly recommend that you pay attention to where the bunnies are. That's because they've implemented snares into the game for later. And so if you're trying to hunt bunnies, a lot of people may not know this, I guess, in the modern realm, because how frequently do you go rabbit hunting when you live in a city? However, what I will say is that rabbits over the generations, they frequent the same paths, and so they're called rabbit trails. And they tend to wind all over the place, and generation after generation of rabbit will use these trails to get around. You want to pay attention to where the rabbits are in-game, because once you have snares, you're not going to have a whole lot of luck catching anything if you don't pay attention to where the rabbits are in the first place. If you pay attention to where they are in the first place, you want to leave snares in areas that are frequented by rabbits. They did nerf rabbit hunting in the last patch. What I like to do is when the stump's in, you're going to cross over this hill right here. You're going to go to the top of the hill. You're going to look down. When you see a dead body of a deer and a man, that's when you're going to know you're in the right region. And so I'll show you how to do that in just a second. As we go to the top of the hill right here, I do this every single time. This is the way that I find my way over here every time, and it works out fantastic. And so as we walk to the right, you may be able to see the cabin from right here, but in order to keep you oriented, actually, let's just take a look. Let's take a look. And so this is actually... We're pretty close. The cabin is right there. You can see it. So you can cross the hill from right here, but what I typically do... As I go down all the way over this direction, once I see a dead body, that's when I cross the hill because that lines you up almost perfectly with the Trapper's Lodge. And so that's what you're looking for right there. You see that fallen log? There may not be a body next to it. Oh, no, there's not a body. That's actually the first time I've ever seen a body not spawn right there. And that's in like 25 hours of gameplay. There's almost always a body right there. All right, well, once you find that fallen log right there looking down from the hill on your right, you can cross over this little tiny hog back right here in the snow. And as you come through here, you will find that it lines you up perfectly with the Trapper's Log. And I can, or the Trapper's Lodge. We don't need the Trapper's Log right now. Although that might help us figure out how he survived so well. Maybe if he kept like a cumulative log about how he did his job every day. That might be a suitable way for us to lock down and, you know, survive better. However, there's always a deer inside this dead little area over here. 
And so what I would like to do is let's go ahead and farm off the carcass because we need it for dinner. It's going to take us 12 minutes to get a little bit of frozen meat off the body. This will degrade the knives. I am happy to say that your tools don't degrade as fast as they used to back in ye olden days when the game first came out. You were constantly breaking your knives and your hatchets and things like that. Now they seem to last a lot better. You need the gut later on. You can make fishing line out of the gut. And so there it is. We may start to freeze to death in just a second. So I'm going to keep an eye down in the bottom right hand. Actually, we're starving. That's going to be the problem first. It seems like we're holding heat pretty well first firewood's going to keep us nice for later on. I would highly recommend crouching and checking inside of there. Now, directionally, what's in this area? Well, off to the left, you've got Max's last stand, which is a dead body that sometimes has a gun next to it. On this side, you've got the Trapper's Lodge, which is one of the foremost locations you want to hit if you're trying to lock down a gun on the first day. Additionally, it's very, very warm, and so when you hang out in here, you don't have too many concerns with the old freezing and dying motive of the survival experience and so there it is let's go inside we'll get ourselves all nice and settled and cuddled on in once we've been appropriately cuddled because obviously i like to start off every adventure with a little bit of cuddling i think that did we get a gun we did actually we got a gun they nerfed this over here where you don't frequently get guns from right here anymore because this used to be the first spot you know just how i did everybody heads here the first time just to see if they can get a gun real quick and so it actually spawns in a lot of different locations right now but I've done about six playthroughs now in my free time, just sort of warming up for this one, and that's the first time in six playthroughs, this would be our seventh, that I've seen a hunting rifle right here. Typically, I have to find it over by the train wreck now, or I find it inside of the dam. But still, look at the supplies we have in here. All kinds of good stuff. We've got a military-grade MRE. I would hold off on using those. MREs, I tend to save them for when I'm exploring zones that I'm unfamiliar with. A can opener, very, very useful piece of equipment. We've got a 308 round right there. Awesome, we got a flare, we've got a little bit of candy. I want candy, bubblegum, and taffy, skip to the sweet shop with my sweetheart, Sandy. I'm a giant MC Chris fan, I don't know if you guys knew that, but I am. Huge MC Chris fan, I like people that do original things with like genres that are already predetermined, and I like what MC Chris does. Got bandages and sewing kits over here, that'll be alright. We got ourselves a locker, which is luckily unlocked because we don't have a crowbar yet. We need a crowbar in order to pick locks, unfortunately, it's not really picking locks, it's prying locks, but... Got ourselves a snare, so a freebie snare right there. What I would do is before we go and sleep, we got some beef jerky. I'm going to be a little bit behind. Another sewing kit, another soda. What I would do right now is let's go outside, and I'm going to set the snare. I don't think we're going to catch anything. I, Just realistically speaking, I don't see a lot of rabbits in this area, and since they nerfed snares last, last patch, I tend to avoid using snares at all. However, what we could do... Just place it somewhere. I have no luck with snares. The reason you want to catch rabbits is because it'll give you bunny fur gloves if you can catch them. And so with this big open field right here, I don't see any rabbits around. How much time do we have left? Less than an hour. Okay, I'm going to try not to die right now. So instead, I know, go figure, right? Trying not to die in a survival game. Er, it's in the name. Let's go with the snare. We can place this like so. I don't know how you rotate it. I don't think that's anything I've ever played around with just yet. You rotate it with that, no. You rotate it with that, no. Do you rotate it with that, no. Okay, well, I'm just going to drop it on the ground then. Snares are sort of hit or miss in real life. Snares are kind of like one of those things where if you've got a rabbit trail and you know where to put a snare and you know how to design a snare, you can actually catch stuff with them infrequently, but it's enough to get a meal every day or two. Typically, the way that you would do this, the Native Americans would do this by anteing up and ponying up, and they would actually like lay out dozens upon dozens upon dozens of snares. The more snares you have on the more rabbit trails, the better chances you have of actually catching catching something for right now if you're wondering why I haven't picked up the gun it's very very heavy and I just don't feel like trudging around with the gun just yet until we have to let's get a fire started shall we then we'll take an appraisal of all the stuff that we found over the course of the day and then we'll end the episode so the metal containers got candy bars all kinds of goodies out here some people prefer to survive in this location I don't just because it's too far away from everything that's just the way that I prefer to run things down the other thing that you can do is you can survive out of the dam and I think that in the interest of giving a damn, or at least getting a damn, I may try that. Since we've got a gun, it should make exploration a lot more easy as we go into the future. Some herbal tea are right there, just in case you want to get the throat like sort of like lozenged up or whatever. Let's jump into the stove. We don't have a fire starter, so we're still going to struggle a little bit with getting our fire started. But we'll start this one off right here. It's going to take us just a minute. And as we get that done, I wanted to say thank you to all of you for being here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our next playthrough of The Long Dark. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. I really do enjoy this game, so I think we're going to have a lot of fun playing it. I love talking about survival stuff, and I really enjoy sort of giving my knowledge out and allowing people to just... 
you know, understand that it is survivable without of without all of life's modern comforts out there. I don't get a chance to do it as much as I would like to anymore, but I do enjoy going out into nature and camping and trying to, you know, survive and do things in a minimalist fashion. I'll probably use the reclaimed wood first because it's the least valuable. But the reason I'm stocking up right now is because we've got a lot of stuff to do in the next episode. So anyways, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for the long dark. I will see you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. And as always, I do.